expensive watch on the market. Is it worth it? Let's find out. Hey, I'm Cecile, a French artist, and my mission is to help you becoming a better artist. Today I want to test this Schmincke or Adam gouache. I wrote an article about gouache brands comparing the different prices. And guess what? This one is the most expensive you can find on the market. So I've bought only four tubes of it. So I will swatch it, test it, and paint a colorful bird. This gouache is so expensive that I bought only four colors. White, obviously you always need some for your mixes. Helio blue magenta and lemon yellow. Let's call these primaries and we can make a lot of colors. I'm using a sketchbook in which I'm always testing my new colors when I buy them and I want to make a very loose chromatic wheel and make some tries with the paint. I'm going straight for it. No tracing, no circle, no nothing because I don't have time for that. I just want to play with this new paint. First impression, the paint is really creamy, really cool to apply on the paper. And as I have my blue inside and it seems to be really strong, really pigmented, I will add a tiny bit of pink inside and it's so tiny that it doesn't show. So I have to add more and maybe go from the pink and add the blue inside. And as always, the camera is eating the colors. And now the pure pink, and it seems to be transparent. And that's cool because it's written on the tube, actually. You can see the half-filled square means that it's semi-opaque or semi-transparent, depending how you are seeing that, as well as the white and the yellow. That's what I was expecting. And the blue is really opaque, and you can already tell because it's so strongly pigmented that you cannot see the paper behind. Finishing the wheel and after that I will get the colors that are still on my palette and I will add white inside and just place it outside of my wheel because sometimes colors are so dark, so strong that you cannot really tell which shade it is and you need to add white to see better. Okay, so far we've just placed the primary colors, the secondary colors. Now it's time for tertiary colors and I want first to make some neutral grays because this is very important to be able to mix a color that you want to achieve exactly. And by the way, if you want me to make a video about how to mix colors, just let me know in comments and maybe I will do it. Let's see what kind of greens I can get with those colors. And I'm not cleaning my palette because I want to be able to pick up a bit of color inside to tone down a color. Here there is a lot of red, but if you add a bit more blue, you can get kind of a neutral khaki, add a bit more vibrant color. Well, it's really important to make tries and see all the possibilities you have with three colors only and white. So I would say mixing colors is really cool with this Horadam paint. Now I want to test the blending and also how it behaves when you add pure water well, it's not clean, but it's pure, to my existing blue, just to dilute it and see how far I can go with a tiny amount of pigment. And this blue is really strong. Now let's go for blending two colors. And this is something I have a hard time doing when I'm painting with Himi gouache, for example. So let's see how this very expensive paint is behaving. I'm placing the two colors next to each other and I'm just rubbing in the middle, in the border, so to speak, and get a nice gradient very easily. And if you want to learn more about how to make gradients, I made a video about this and you have the link in the description below. Let's test the opacity and we already have a clue with what's written on the tube. So I've placed uh, just a mark of Posca marker black and placing the pure color on top of it. And as expected, the blue is really opaque, but the other colors are not opaque, but that was expected, so no problem. Even if the white is more opaque than what I was expecting, and it's a good point because I will be able to use white to get my mix a bit more opaque when I will be painting. If this video is helpful so far, please boop the like button. It's really helpful. Thank you.
The color will make me think of a colorful bird and this is what I'm going to paint with this Rodin paint. I'm making a very loose sketch with a watercolor pencil because it will merge inside the paint. With the colors that I have, it will be easy to mix for the feathers and the colorful bird, but for the branches, I think it will be a bit more tricky. But that's a challenge and I'm ready to take it. I would say that my style requires a bit of blending in the colors and I want to make sure this paint is behaving properly. And it actually it does because I can merge the two colors really easily. It's working like a charm. The pink being transparent, it won't be easy to cover the existing blue that I placed. For example, just here, there is a slightly amount of pure red and I think I cannot do it by just adding a transparent pink on top of a purple. So I will have to mix white inside to give it more body and maybe to paint white and repaint with pink on top of it. Well, you just have to know your colors and your opacity. Let's try a watery background. This is something I do quite often. I want to see if the pigments are behaving properly when I add a ton of water, almost like watercolor, so to speak. I'm placing large brush strokes to have a very loose gradient in the background. Let's see how it works. It works fine, I would say. Now the tricky color to mix is the brown for the branches and it's a bit of everything actually, except white. So you have to adjust the amount of each color until you get something that is brown enough or brownish, I would say. Once you get that, you want to add some variation to give some textures with a very thick consistency and consistency is key when you are working with gouache and if you want to know more about consistency I made just a video with the do's and don'ts of gouache consistency and I link it above. Something very special to gouache is that you can add layers on top of each other and they will kind of soak into each other. This is something I want to try here and it's working perfectly well. I can add this light blue on top and it's really mixing with the under layer. Very cool! So what is my conclusion about this gouache paint? Well, obviously this is a very good gouache and it's creamy, the colors mix very well, it's really great for blending and everything. But, but, it's not a complete study because I had only three colors plus white, so maybe other colors don't behave the same. Also, you have more to test if you want to be really complete, you have to test a light fastness. Uh, meaning how long will the color stay before fading. And it's not a scientific test, it's just my test, so please bear with me. So far I'm happy with it, but I'm not really sure it's worth the price. So obviously it was not a sponsored video.
Now YouTube thinks this is the best video for you. Go check it. I've bought the most expensive guava.